Well, we're so grateful for uh, Cross Flame Youth Choir. Appreciate you leading us in worship today and for Revelation, uh, helping us on our 11 o'clock service there. Appreciate them using their gifts in ministry. Uh, we're concluding a five-week sermon series on Ignite. Ignite, and in this uh, sermon series, the last four weeks, uh, we've tried to, to help every member of our congregation ignite in loving others and in loving God. Our theme verse has been Luke uh, chapter 24, verse 32a. I hope we have it memorized by now. It's that familiar story uh, of the walk to Emmaus. Just a few hours after God raised Jesus from the dead, uh, two of Jesus' disciples are on the way to Emmaus. As they walk, the risen Lord comes and joins them in their traveling. But they don't know that it's him. For some reason, they can't recognize him. They keep on walking. They persuade him to share a supper with them, a meal. And the scripture says that when Jesus took bread, uh, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, their eyes were open, and they recognized him. And, and I love the response of these two disciples. They said to each other, didn't we feel on fire as he walked with us along the way and as he opened the scriptures to us? They knew something remarkable had happened right, right there to them. Didn't we feel on fire? So they ignite these two guys and they go and they, they share their witness with the rest of the disciples. We've seen the risen Lord. They were on, on fire. I believe uh, that uh, we, can, uh, we can ignite in our relationship with Jesus Christ. I believe we can wake up every day fired up about our quiet time and how we'll grow closer to Christ that day. I believe we can wake up every day fired up about who God's calling us to make a friend of this month, a new friend outside our old circle of friends, like we talked about last week, getting outside of those circles we already have and finding a new friend who's not a Christian, just in the hopes that God might use us to impact eternity for them. I believe we can wake up every day uh, fired up about uh, how God can use our financial gifts to form new and creative ministries in this community. It, it, one of those ways might be uh, through uh, adult respite ministry. I don't know. We're, we're trying to discern that. It, it depends on how we're fired up by the Holy Spirit. I believe we can wake up every day fired up <laughs> to be uh, present with people, to be Christ's presence, as Luther, Luther said, and as we talked about a few weeks ago, little Christ. To others, I believe we can wake up every single morning fired up about whom God wants us to pray, who we need to lift up before God, who needs a word of encouragement from us today, who needs a pat on the back instead of criticism, who needs to be just embraced. I believe, I believe we can wake up every day with a burning in our soul to love Jesus more dearly and follow him more nearly. Now, uh, this morning our focus is on igniting our service, igniting uh, our service. Are you familiar with Robert and Anthony Duran, twin brothers who live out in California? Anyone know Robert and Anthony? Uh, I know about Robert and Anthony uh, because one day they decided to skip school. And then uh, they found out that they couldn't help not skipping school every single day. Robert and Anthony Duran ended up skipping their entire freshman and sophomore year of school at Corona High School. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? They left home every morning. <laughs> they just never went to school. <laughs> and when they were finally caught, because hear me, you will get caught, but when they were finally caught, uh, they were interviewed by the newspaper. And I love these brothers and, and what they said. Uh, they said, um, uh, every day... We planned on telling our dad we were skipping school. But every day, we just didn't. <laughs> that was their excuse. <laughs> we just didn't. We just didn't. It's so easy to let, let things just slip away. I think that's somewhat of what might have been happening in Timothy's life and our epistle lesson that Wes read a few moments ago. The Apostle Paul writes his uh, young disciple, Timothy, who's living in the city of Ephesus. Now, Paul was the founding father of the Christian church there at Ephesus, and Paul was also Timothy's father in the faith. And Paul is very concerned about Timothy and that church. So he, 
he writes to him, and, and in verse 6, he, he writes these words. I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you. The New International Version says, I remind you to fan into flames the gift of God that is within you. Something in Timothy has slipped away. We don't know what it was. Maybe it was uh, the fact that uh, maybe his leadership skills. You know, Paul says, I've laid hands on you and, uh, and this gift's in you. Maybe it were leadership skills. He had just her abilities. He let sort of slip away. Or maybe it was how he was serving with the poor and the hungry there in Ephesus. We, we don't know what it was. All we know is that, that some gift, some gift of service in Timothy was smoldering and the church was suffering. So Paul writes and says, rekindle the gift in you. One version says, stir up the gift in you. Fan into flames this gift that, that's in you. Let me ask you something. Is there a burning in you to serve others in the name of Christ? Are you fired up about the gifts that God has given to you placed in your, your DNA to serve others in his name? Are you on fire when it comes to your spiritual discipline of serving? Serving. Uh, that's my focus this morning. I'd quickly like to offer you just two thoughts uh, that I hope will help us all in igniting in our service. I provided an outline in uh, the order of worship this morning. It's under the sermon title. I invite you to use that if, if that's helpful to you, the first point is just a simple point, but it's just a foundational point. We are called to serve. We are called to serve in our baptisms. God ordains us for ministry and service in the world. Through water and the Spirit, we're sent out into the world to be in ministry, to be Christ's servants. Paul, uh, when he talks about this with the church in Corinth, talks about the body of Christ. And he says, you know, we're, we're like a body. The body has different parts. Uh, the, the hand uh, has a different function than, than the mouth. And the mouth has a different function than the foot. But, but, but when they all work and serve together, the body becomes whole. And that's true for, for any body of Christ, any local church. Uh, when uh, We may have different gifts. I, I have gifts that are unique to me. And you have gifts that are unique to you. And, and you have gifts that are different from the gifts down below on this, with this group. And, and, and you have gifts that are different than this crowd back here hiding behind the flowers. And we, we, all have, we all have different gifts. But when we, when we work together and serve together, the body becomes whole. It takes every unique piece. And that's a wonderful thing. Uh, when someone joins our church, when... Um, whether they come as a family or individual on a Sunday morning or through one of our Join, the, the join First Methodist breakfasts, uh, we always give them a, a commitment card like we brought with us today. And uh, You know, most of that card has to do with where we serve. So I always take a moment and talk with them about serving. I, I say to everyone who joins our church, please don't sign up to serve more than about four places and four areas. I know from experience that those who sign up for five and seven and 10 and 15 places end up trying to do 10 things and they're being pulled this way and that way and they get frustrated because then they're doing everything with great mediocrity and most of our folks don't like to be average. They all want to be above average. So they're, they're, they're being pulled here and there. They're being asked to do this because they signed up for 15 different things and then they get mad. Mad at themselves, mad at whoever calls them. Then they get angry. And then they get angry and stop serving. And then they go out the back door of the church and we don't see them again. Just sort of burn out and feel like they weren't doing anything really well. So I always tell folks, hey, find, find one to four places where you serve. Uh, you, you're the best judge and serve in those places. And do it well. Do it to the glory of God. Don't do it for me. I don't care. Do it for the glory of Almighty God. Serve well. And if everyone does that, we'll be fine. If one or people don't, don't serve, you know, we'll hurt, we'll lack. If 100 or 200 don't serve, then, then we'll hurt significantly in certain areas. But if we all serve, our one four places where God is calling us and, or where God is calling us to explore maybe serving, then we'll be whole. 
will be okay. Foundational point. Second point, second point. Uh, through our service, we can become the answer to someone's prayer. We can become the answer to someone's prayer. Paul uh, knew that Timothy was the key to the health of that church in Ephesus. If Timothy was on fire and serving well, then that, that body of faith, they were going to grow and flourish even in the midst of persecution. But if Timothy was down in the dumps and not, not serving, not living up to his God-given capacity, then that church was going to be in jeopardy. In short, if Timothy served well and was on fire for God, then he had the potential to become the answer to someone's prayer. And when you serve, when you go outside of yourself and serve another person in the name of Jesus, you can become the answer to someone's prayer. What, what do you mean by that? Well, let me just give you an example. Do you know the, the name of Millard Fuller? Millard Fuller, the founder of Habitat for Humanity from America, Georgia, just not too far away from us in the south Georgia. Uh, as a young man, Millard Fuller was a highly successful businessman, a multimillionaire. And then he, he began to hear God's call upon his life. He began to hear the, the call of the poor in this country. So Millard Fuller sold his businesses, he gave away his money, and he started building uh, affordable housing for the poor in our country. And uh, through his efforts and the efforts of a lot of others, uh, he created Habitat for Humanity. And you know that Habitat for Humanity does an unbelievable job of helping with affordable housing uh, in not only our country now, but on a, on a, on a global spectrum. Uh, they're doing that all over all over this planet. Uh, many years ago, uh, Millard Fuller was invited to come to Charlotte, North Carolina, and to speak at a gathering, a huge gathering of people. They were from all sorts of different agencies and communities, and they were meeting at one of these big mega churches there in Charlotte. And the leaders of this event decided not to have the mayor introduce Millard Fuller or any dignitary at all. Instead, they decided they wanted to, to have one of the people who had worked hard and learned for a year or two and then helped build that house and had received that house introduce him. And her name was Melissa Cornett. So uh, when that gathering of five or 6,000 people, uh, Melissa Cornett came up to, um, to introduce Millard Fuller. And what she said was absolutely remarkable. And that's why I want to share it with you. She stood in through, she'd never spoken to more than five or six people at a time, and now she's talking to five or six thousand. She said this, Millard Fuller, you are the answer to my prayer. I grew up in a terrible place full of drugs and violence. I wasn't nobody. I knew I'd never be nobody. I grew up and I had a little boy. And there he was in that terrible place full of drugs and violence. I knew he would never be nobody either. So I got on my knees and I prayed. I prayed hard. Lord, I'll do anything. I'll give up my life, but please, God, I just want my boy to have a chance to be somebody. She said, Miller Fuller, when God told you to give away your money and you did, you were the answer to my prayer." I heard about Habitat, and I got to build a house. We got a home, a nice home. Millard Fuller, you are the answer to my prayer. Before we moved in, my boy started school. But his teacher said he was slow and would never probably catch up. He never smiled, and he never played outside. Then we moved into our new home. He had his own room. He began to shine that day. He got where he played and had fun. He started making good grades, and now he's in the third grade, and he's making straight A's. Millard Fuller, you are the answer to my prayers. Can you imagine anything better than being the answer to someone's prayers? I can't imagine anything better than that. Now, Millard Fuller wasn't the only one who was uh, the answer 
to Melissa's prayers. The truth is, everyone who hammered a nail in that house, everyone who helped with landscaping, everyone who painted a wall or sheetrock, anyone who helped prepare meals that, that fed the servers as they were, that came from churches and community groups and all there to build that house, every one of them, every one of them was an answer to Melissa Cornett's prayer. When, when you sacrifice so that life will be better for someone else, and when you forget about yourself and serve someone in the name of Christ, you become the answer to their prayers. Praise be to God. How, how marvelous. And you do that at work, you do that in this community, you do that in this church, on the playgrounds. You become answers to prayers other people are, are praying. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I encourage you today to remember that we're all called to serve. We were ordained for it in our baptism. And I encourage you to remember as you serve, because sometimes you, you don't get that, that quick attaboy, girl, but we're not doing it for that. Sometimes we, when we just serve, we found out years later we were the answer to someone's prayer. So get fired up. Get fired up. Wake up every day and say, Lord, who are you calling me to serve today? Where are you calling me to serve this day? Amen and amen. It's time now for us to bring our commitment cards and uh, lay them before the Lord and make our, our commitments, as I was telling the children, uh, for where we will uh, serve and witness and pray and give financially and where we'll be present in the name of Christ uh, for the year 2015. I hope you brought your card with you. If you have not, there are some in the hymnal right before you. There are uh, cards, uh, they're really little pamphlets for uh, children and tweens, those are together. Then the youth have their own card and then adults have their own car. Now, if you're our guest today and visiting with us, let me just say, if, if you've been visiting for uh, three weeks or, or more, uh, I invite you to turn in a car and support this church uh, through your prayers, presence, gifts, and service where, where you are being nurtured because God's already using you here and God's using us in your life. I invite you to make a commitment uh, and join the church later if you like. But if this is where you're being nurtured, Come make it possible for others. If this is your first time here, second or third time, uh, just know that what we're doing is sort of like taking care of family business. Uh, we're making sure that we respond uh, to God's call on us for next year and, and how we commit ourselves will determine what we can do in that year. So you just pray for us as we come and uh, bring our commitment cards. Uh, in a moment, uh, you'll be invited to come uh, just come as you will. The ushers won't be guiding us. We'll come, and uh, you'll find two urns down front. If you place your card in there, that'll help us keep those cards confidential uh, because they'll be picked up by someone from the finance office. And, and you're invited to pray before you uh, place your card in the urn or afterwards, whatever you like, or, or just go back in your pew and pray. But we invite you as uh, households to make this a, a time of real commitment uh, with those with whom you love and, and care. Uh, so... I invite you to come now uh, as you feel led.